Good afternoon, all. I'm uh, Shai Einbinder, a marine biologist by profession, co-founder and CEO of Viaqua Therapeutics. Viaqua was founded uh, two years ago to deal with one of the major challenges in aquaculture in general and shrink farming in particular, diseases. Shrink farming is an enormous industry with a total value of about 17 to 20, even 23 billion dollars. Today, more than 55% of global shrimp supply comes from aquaculture. But switching from wild capture to aquaculture created a new set of challenges. The biggest and most damaging of these is the widespread of diseases. The Mozambique shrimp industry was shut down in 2011. Iran, our neighbor, suffered 50% loss in 2015, and many other examples exist. Today, there are no means to prevent or deal with the virus or the disease, and when the disease occurs, it simply wipes out the pond within seven to 10 days. A partner from uh, uh, Thailand told us that uh, uh, growing, uh, growing shrimp today would be kind of uh, gambling. The therapeutic approach we have taken to tackle this challenge is based on silencing key genes of the virus using a method called RNAi, RNA interference. The main challenge using RNAi in shrimp is how to effectively deliver the RNAi to the shrimps, since injecting one by one would not be a method to be widely used in shrimp aquaculture. Viaqua is developing a platform to technology for RNAi delivery, which is tailored specific for aquaculture. The goal is to administer the RNA through the shrimp's feet. For each virus, we can select a specific RNA strand and combine it with our effective developed carrier, a non-GMO food grade formulation that is biodegradable and both safe for human and for shrimps. Together, the RNA and the carrier form, form a nanoparticle, which penetrates, which is stable in the aquatic environment, stable in the digestive system of the shrimp, and enters the shrimp, sh shrimp shells and release the RNA to create the desired effect. I want a uh, proof of concept for our, for our vaccination against the WSSV virus, which is one of the main viruses, was performed in two different locations, one in Arizona and one in Thailand. In the first challenge test, we have, we have injected the sequences which were produced in Viaqua. We got wonderful results with 87% survival, 87 to 93% survival, as compared to 0% survival in the untreated group. In the second larger challenge test, we injected the nanoparticles themselves into the shrimp, and we got 99% uh, uh, survival as compared to 0% survival in the untreated We have overcome few of the challenges in the development process. The aqua, pro the aqua nanoparticles are stable in the aquatic environment. They are protected from the enzymatic activity in the digestive system, and they enter the cell, absorbed in the cell, and release the RNA in the cells. Here you see, not so brightly, the uh, nanoparticles in the cell themselves. Our first result using nanoparticle in speed demonstrated 50% silencing of the target gene. They are much more effective than free RNA, but yet not as quite as, as effective as the result we got from the injectant. But we will get there. Our technology combined all properties which are necessary for a real feasible solution for aquaculture. It allows simple administration via feed. It is inexpensive and quite easy from the regulatory perspective. Importantly, it is a platform technology with a broad range of application. We can use it for different viruses, and in the future, we can use it for any other aquatic animal. Biaqua is raising $2.5 million to accelerate development, perform field trials, and to reach our first commer commercial product. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Um, so one of the challenging things in your technology is uh, the ability to scale up and uh, to create a cost-effective uh, solution and, uh, of course, the delivery system. 
Uh, how uh, you think to address these challenges? It is a challenge, but production of the solution, production of the, of the nanoparticle and the carrier are cheap. So it, it would be easily scaled up once you get the solution. Before I begin, I want to thank Trendlines for the organization and the invitation. Uh, being part of the agricultural community for over 27 years, I'm happy that somebody already is taking care of it and uh, thinks about it. It's uh, very important for us as people from this community that uh, there is somebody is pushing it forward. So thank you very much. Uh, my name is Zohad Zuckerman. I, I am uh, the CEO and chairman of Univerve. Before that, I was working in Zarain Gadera for almost 20 years. It's a seed company. And what we do with algae is very similar. We look for strains instead of breeding varieties. Uh, we try to grow them and to take out interesting materials and eat, and eventually to look for buyers. The same story, and actually the nice thing is that microalgae are the most ancient organism on Earth, uh, and they are responsible for 70% of the oxygen that we breathe, and they multiple faster than any other plant in the world. They create biomass, but this biomass is very valuable because microalgae can create all the materials that you look for in any bio industry. And now when people are in the bio-based economy looking for replacement for fossil-based and synthetic materials, microalgae are an opportunity to be the future feedstock in many industries. You just have to know which variety is or which strain is producing the compound that you want and to produce it. It sounds easy, but it's not. The process is to find the right strain, to cultivate it, to harvest and to extract the compound that you look for, but we are in a business that must make money. And the key success factor, as always in agriculture, is to have high yield per square meter. And here we found that the cultivation system is the key success factor. And this is a problem in the algae industry. No, uh, not so many have succeeded unless they go for very, very high value materials. And Univerve, uh, our company, decided to focus on this issue and to challenge the issue of cost and scalability. So we have invented the patented, uh, a patented, a very funny looking production system, and as all the genius investment, uh, in, uh, inventions, they're very simple. And they, this uh, technology enables to, ha to have a very high a, a yield per square meter with very low energy and very low labor cost and it's very flexible because you can grow many kinds of strains in high scale and in very low cost in comparison to any other system that, that exists today like the open ponds and the photobioreactors. And the beauty is that once you have an installation and you want to change to grow another strain for another compound, you can do it because it's a generic system. So this is what Univerv does. Uh, we were approached by companies from the food uh, 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 chain that are interested in omega-3. Omega-3 today is taken from fish and krill. However, they do not produce it. They eat microalgae. So uh, today there is a trend to replace uh, omega-3 from fish and krill with omega-3 from microalgae that are grown onshore and therefore it's sustainable, doesn't hurt the ecosystem in the sea, it's pure, no mercury or things like that, and also vegan and vegetarians can eat it. So we have tailored a complete process. We found a strain that has uh, EPA, one of the fatty acids inside. We uh, adjusted the protocols of the production for it, and we took off the shelf technologies to complete the whole process. And this is the demonstration site that uh, is going to develop into a project. Uh, we have secured land for 20 years with water rights, and we are now negotiating with a company from the food industry to take over the site. Uh, we will manage and produce, and they will be the off-takers. Um, in addition to that, we are negotiating projects in additional projects in Israel, also in China and in Uruguay for people not necessarily from the uh, uh, food chain, but also from other industries. Uh, the company is also dealing with some R&D. Uh, we are discussing with external scientists uh, that uh, work in collaboration with us uh, to uh, uh, identify extracts for the cosmetics and for uh, healthcare uh, industries, all derived from microalgae. 
So I think that if we talk about microalgae, it's one of the most promising feedstock that exists. Uh, our patent uh, technology can be very, very uh, good for algae production uh, in open uh, air, no need for uh, difficult and uh, more e expensive uh, structures. Uh, it's ready for commercialization, and uh, you can uh, see that we have already identified some high potential, also high volume, uh, high value uh, compounds. Uh, we are looking for investors to invest in Univerv, possibly also in a project, uh, in order to continue our uh, uh, scaling up and also to uh, continue the business development uh, in the global markets. Thank you very much. Actually, my question was about the biofuel industry. Does that mean, you did mention it, does that mean you're not playing in that sector anymore? Well, uh, our luck is that we started with biofuel in, uh, in mind, and this is why we designed a very, very uh, efficient uh, technology that can produce the oil as basis for biodiesel or biojet fuel. Mm -hmm. um, as we saw that the market is not uh, going up, uh, we uh, looked for other potential uh, uh, high-value compounds. We were then approached by the company that is dealing with omega-3, and that was there. Mm -hmm. The funny thing is that it's the same strain that you grow for omega-3 has also the fatty acid to go for biodiesel. You just have to fractionate the oil. All the chains up to 20 uh, carbons will go for biofuel, and 20 carbons and up go for the omega-3. Mm -hmm. And this way you can uh, uh, have a very interesting project. And the good thing is that with the compensation of the price of omega-3, you can give the oil to the biofuel industry for free, and still the project is very profitable. Interesting. Well, as a vegan, paying huge amounts for my plant-based omega-3, I really wish you a lot of luck. Thank you. By the <laughs> way, the, uh, the one that you take from uh, earth pla uh, high plants, the digestibility of the omega-3 is not as good as the one that comes from marine creatures. And uh, that's another uh, advantage of the EPA and the EHA that come from microalgae. I'm ready to be part of your clinical uh, study. We accept visa. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm here to tell you about our company, about Evotronic, and about the next step in uh, uh, thinking machines for agriculture. So, the world climate is changing and the desert is winning. It's becoming harder and harder to predict. It's becoming harder and harder to predict the irrigation needs of a growing crop. Now, when you irrigate, there are only two mistakes you can make. One mistake is not irrigating enough. The other one is too much. In both cases, you will create damage to your crop. Now, our idea is to create a system which irrigates perfectly every single irrigation cycle. In order to achieve this, we use a sensor that is able to connect to the root system of the plant from which we derive the information. Our system is built from a sensor which is installed in the main root system of the plant, which transmits information to the cloud which then returns real-time commands to the valves to open and close and start and stop the irrigation process. This is our system in real life, an installed excellent device and our sensors. Also, we have an app. Everybody must have an app today, okay? So we have an app. Now, for a more practical thing, we have done a lot of ex experiments with our system, a lot of field trials. In one of them, we saved 39% on water and reduced fertilizer use by 39% while increasing crop productivity by 29%. In another trial, a more extreme one, we saved 75% on water and fertilizer and increased by the yield by 7%. In the second case, we are talking about olive trees. Our system is patented and it took us only 11 months to get from application to patent to an actual granted patent. Now, this is the competitive landscape. It divides mainly to, into three categories. The mainstream category, this is the automation computers. 
which every farmer needs to program. And the program will be executed. The second generation, the startups that we, see, we have seen today, is the ability to create additional data for the farmer and to support his decision. Now, the next version, the third generation of devices, would decide the decisions and make the execution of the decisions immediately. And this is where we are. The implication of this is that even in countries where agronomic knowledge is not is as readily available as in Israel, we can grow significant crops. We can grow significant amount of productive crops. This is the team myself, the CEO, Ole Korol, Dr. Itzhak Klein, uh, a PhD that worked for 40 years on research of irrigation, and uh, Ilan Kamarovsky, the CMO of the company. Now, we have already raised more than $2 million in investment. Uh, part of it from private investors, the other part from the Israeli government as an OCS fund. We are going on Kickstarter in a while, so you are all welcome to see us there. Now we are looking to raise additional five millions, but we are looking to raise it from smart money. Meaning, we are looking for somebody not only to give us the money, but also give us access to the markets we need to achieve the success that we are looking for. So we are Tevatronic, and this is autonomous 3D irrigation. Thank you. So what's the 3D? 3D? Uh, because unlike the traditional irrigation of today, we are not thinking only about pouring water on the field, but also where the water will get inside the ground when the, the irrigation is finished. The main idea would be to cover the z-axis into the depth of the uh, so, so field. So I understand your real advantage over competition is your smart algorithm. Yes. And it would be nice if you mentioned just what is it based on. Because you actually make automatic decisions, right? Yes. Uh, it decides by itself based on the data from, from the plant how and uh, when to irrigate. Uh, this is the main idea. How exactly does it work? It's a trade secret. You know, there are no secrets from the government, my dear. Oh. <laughs> Noted. When you look at this apple I'm holding in my hand, you see its size and its color. I see a fruit that was sprayed 21 times this season instead of 15. My name is Ayala Meet from Fielden, and we're an end-to-end -end pest management solution for specialty crop growers. We help some of the largest grow organizations across California, Italy, and Israel save money on better crop protection practices, reducing overall use of pesticides and completely eliminating spray mistakes. We offer a sensor that will make every tractor smart. Along with this sensor, we provide system dashboards to support decision-making at every step of the pest control process, from planning to execution. When it comes to pest management, you can never be too careful. Every year, $14 billion are spent on pesticide products for high-value crops, and yet growers, packing houses, retailers, even chemical companies have no visibility as to how these products are applied, let alone on the quality of field operations. It's like a black hole. This black hole translates into one out of four sprays going wrong, and for some of the crops, 20% produce that reaches packing houses is deemed unsellable. But spraying, too little spraying, unnecessary spraying, spraying when the tractor goes too fast, spraying under unfavorable weather conditions, nobody knows. You don't know what you don't know. You do know. Working with field in, very quickly growers begin to realize that what happens in the field isn't always in line with what they had planned. Here's a good example. These two spray rigs spraying an almond field for one of the largest nut growers in California. Our sensors tell us not just where they're traveling, but where they actually spray, at what velocity, what volume, which sides, what time the spraying took place. The grower always knows that a spray is happening, but they never really know the results. In this case, two rows were missed. It happens to all of our customers, and it happens all the time. In fact, insufficient treatment alone costs this enterprise grower $700,000 annually. And you can add that to the millions they're already spending on pest management, which constitutes about 15 to 20 percent of their total seasonal expenditure. This is where fielding comes into play. 
We combine real-time data from the field throughout the entire pest control cycle. Scouting data, weather information, aerial imagery, tractor sensors, so we know what was planned, we know what actually happened, and therefore we know of any discrepancies that occur in between. It's the first time growers can act without uncertainty or second guessing, and when I say growers, I mean every stakeholder involved in the process. Field scouts can monitor information work conveniently with our monitoring app. Pest control advisors have access to spray logs, weather information, and any other historical or real-time information they need to optimize treatment recommendations. Growers and sprayers alike get a chance to see operations in real time and also to analyze them later on. And when we combine all the operative data collected, executives get a chance to see the bigger picture using our big data insight tools. Actually, data is the big story here. We process 100,000 data points every day, more than 7,000 sprays a season. Our database has become a benchmark for growth, not only for growers, but also for third-party stakeholders like chemical companies and packing houses. And the possibilities are endless. Just this past season, we've been able to answer questions about product efficiency comparisons, application timing, general regional trends, one chemical company to license a new product, and growers to turn to our benchmark before making decisions about pesticide purchases or spray volume. They do this because our data stems from the field, which means that it's more accurate, more valuable, and perhaps most importantly in this business, 100% actionable. Bottom line, our job is to point these growers' attention to the quality of spray operations and to help them on three counts. Reduce the number of sprays throughout the season, whereas currently most growers spray in excess. Increase spray efficiency rates by maximizing output and keeping downtime to a minimum. Increasing packaging rates through better crop protection practices. How do we know this works? Well, on the customer side, we've been working this past season with some of the most prominent nut and wine producers across California. One quick example is a customer who went from a mere proof of concept into six weeks to a 20,000 acre project. In Israel, we support all major grow organizations and with the largest exporter of fruits in the country, we've expanded this season from 1,000 acres to 3,500 acres. This number, we're, this number will triple next season. Our policy is to target the largest growers in the most strategic locations, offering them a high-value product that's first to market. We give immediate value, return get paid from day one through a simple per acre subscription fee. When you give value, it works. We also understand that expanding our business through partnerships is key to scaling, which is why we're actively building our foundation in preparation for 2017. A good example here is that we've teamed up with one of the chemical giants and have already collaborated on three joint projects fully funded. So in summary, let me say this. Fieldin is making an impact on the industry in two ways. We're helping growers shift their attention from questions about activities taking place to questions about the quality of operations and their immediate impact. And with our extensive knowledge base, we are providing a benchmark for the industry with new, deeper insights that weren't available beforehand, that couldn't be available beforehand. And these insights, we wholeheartedly believe, will change the way pest management is performed. Thank you. Hi. Hi there. Um, one of the hardest things for ag companies is uh, to make uh, growers increase their expenditure actually to get paid. It seems that you have done a very good job in this uh, territory. Can you explain uh, more how you did it? Well, I can share from our own experience. I mean, what we've been seeing, uh, customers are absolutely bombarded with new technologies day in, day out. They get 15 20, 30 different startup companies sitting on Market Street in San Francisco offering them to increase their yields by 40%, reduce their water usage by 30%. That's not enough. I see that there are three pillars if you want to succeed with a customer. The first is just the value discovery phase. It needs to be immediately, right now. And I think the type of example that Holden uses, what gets our foot in the door is the ability to demonstrate mistakes because everyone makes mistakes all the time. Secondly, I think it's about giving value to everyone who's involved in the process. I think you'll find a lot of software companies out there that give value to the executive or the managerial roles, but there are a thousand different micro-operative uh, decisions that take 
specifically in pest management. You need to give the incentive for people to use uh, your software. It's not enough just to make a sell. That will do for one year, but what happens in year two and year three? And thirdly, I think it's what you do with the data. I mean, you need to surprise your growers. You need to come with something that they couldn't think of beforehand. That's, that's the real data. Uh, that's the real value here in terms of the executive roles. They don't care to hear about missing a row or double spraying or missing an entire block. They want to know on average what's the efficiency rates. What works well? What doesn't work well? You need a good team.